Hello, this is a lesson on sorting numbers. It's lesson three of unit two for whole numbers in grade four. So uh, first, before we start, we're just going to review a few types of diagrams that we're going to be looking at today. So one type of diagram is a Venn diagram. Um, and there's actually two styles of Venn diagrams. So this is the more common one that you've probably seen. And so um, we've got two circles. And then, so it's just a way of sorting information. So if there's a certain type of information that um, fits with both the uh, categories for the yellow circle as it does for the blue circle, then it would go in the middle where it makes green. Um, and I've got an example here. So this is the type of Venn diagram that we're looking at for right now. And so if we labeled this circle red fish, or just red, and this circle was, um, has stripes for fish, and then we had a, just a group of fish that we needed to sort. Then we would take a look and we would say, okay, all fish that are red with no stripes are going to go here. All fish that are, have stripes but no red on them are going to go here. All fish that have stripes and red both at the same time are going to go in the middle of the circle because they, they connect and they are then in between both or inside of both circles. Okay, and then the last part of the Venn diagram is things that don't fit into either of the circle. So there are fish that are not red and that they also do not have stripes. So if we have a fish like that, they would go on the outside of the diagram. So in this case, there's a green fish there because he doesn't fit and neither does this yellow fish. Okay, um, find this in the classroom and you can reference it later. Um, we've also got another style of Venn diagram, which is right here. And so this style, we've got um, the Venn diagram here, um, and then there's a big circle and a little circle. So in this case, we would have um, something that, like a category, and then in the middle, it would have to be the, the category that the middle has and also here. Okay, and then so an example would be, um, this one's using multiple, so it's a little bit more complex than just fish, but um, it has, so things that are multiples of five go into this circle, things that are multiples of two and multiples of five go in this circle, and things that don't fit in either category go on the outside. Okay, so for example, 10, you can go two times five is 10, and then it also fits in here because five times two is 10. So it fits in there, same with 20, uh, 10 times 2 is 20, and if we go out here, 5 times 4 is 20, so they're both multiples of 10. Okay, it's okay if you don't know that math, but that's just the basics. It has to fit this category and this category to go in this circle. If it fits this circle but not this circle, then it goes here. And if it fits this circle but not this one, it has to go on the outside. Okay, so it's a little bit different than the other kind. Um, and then the last style of diagram is called a Carroll diagram. And in this one, um, we have, so we have, so we have four categories. So things that fit both one and three would go here. Things that fit both three and two go here. Things that fit both four and one go here. Things that fit, fit both four and two go here, okay? Um, and we'll look at a more concrete example of this in your um, lesson handout. So if we turn to your lesson handout now, um, it says, you can sort numbers in a variety of ways. You may ask yourself, are the numbers odd or even? So we could sort numbers, we could have a circle that's, um, are the numbers odd? Um, or are the numbers even? You could look at if a number is greater than a certain number. So if all of the numbers in this are greater than uh, 100, then they go in the circle. And if they're not greater than 100, then they can't go in that circle. Okay, and do the numbers have a certain amount of digits? So maybe we have a circle that has, has four digits. And all numbers that have four digits go in that circle. And it, all ones that don't, then don't go in that circle. Okay? So let's look at this type of Venn diagram first. Um, this one is like that one, the first one we looked at, but they're separated. So this one's even easier than that one. And so we've got has three digits and has four digits. So we could sort a number and it's 
only going to have three digits or it's only going to have four digits. And um, if it does not have either of those, then we put it on the outside of the, the circles inside the box there. Okay, so let's practice. So it says use this method when there are no numbers that would have both properties in the circles. Because you couldn't have a number that's um, exactly three digits and a number that's exactly four digits, right? So um, you can have two separate circles in this case. So we can, here are our numbers. So we've got 546, I mean 564. 564. Try to keep these as organized as you can in the circles. It gets a little difficult to read for me when I'm correcting. 36 would go there. Uh, 700 or 7,851 goes right there. Okay, so you get the idea. Please pause the video and fill in the rest of the circles and then play again and watch me to make sure that you got it correct. Okay, so you should have it finished. And so we've got five, two, six, seven, that goes here. We've got three, five, seven, 357. Goes in the three digit. We've got five here. Now notice I'm crossing them out, but don't do that in your textbook. If you want to use the crossing out method, then write these numbers in your book, just um, in a margin, and then cross them out there because you shouldn't be um, marking in your textbook. Anyways, continuing on, we've got 1,524. And the last 971. So notice there are some numbers in this circle, some in this circle, and some on the outside of the circle because they don't fit in either category. Oh, it's going that way, is it? Okay, next one is the Venn, di Venn diagrams with one circle inside of the other circle. Um, and depending on your familiarity, this might be a little easier or uh, difficult than that first one we saw with the interconnected circles. Okay, so it says use this method when you want to one circle to have two traits while the other only possesses one trait. So this middle circle has to be numbers less than 5,000 and also numbers with four digits. That's the only thing that can go in there. In the outer circle can only be numbers less than 5,000 um, but it can't have four digits because it'll go in there. So it could be numbers less than 5,000 that have three, two, or one digits, okay? Um, and then on the very outside of the circle would be things that don't fit into either of these categories, okay? Um, even if it has numbers with four digits and it, is, and it doesn't fit into this, if it's more than 5,000, then it also goes on the outside. Okay, so it gets a little more tricky, but it's just sorting numbers. So we just look at each one individually and see where it goes. Okay, so um, place the numbers above. So we have 679. So numbers less than 5,000. Yes, that's, that's less than 5,000, so it at least goes in here. But does it go in here? Numbers with four digits. No, it doesn't have four digits. So we've got 679. Then we've got the next one, 25. So numbers less than 5,000. Yep, that's less than 5,000. Um, so it definitely goes in here. Does it all, can it go in the middle one? Numbers with four digits. No, nope, doesn't have four digits. Goes, goes here again. And it doesn't really matter where in the circle you place it as long as it's easy to read. Okay, um, next one we've got 3,874. So first we look at our first. Um, Characteristic, numbers less than 5,000. Yeah, that's less than 5,000. Is it, uh, does it have four digits? Yeah, it actually does. So we can write it in the center. 3874. Okay, so you get the idea with that one. So you pause the video, see if you can finish the rest and sort them, and then play again once you're finished to make sure that you got all the numbers in the correct spot. Okay, so you should be finished. And so let's finish, um, and then we'll go through the process. So we've got 391. And so is that less than 5,000? Yes. Does it have four digits? No. So that one goes here again. Then we've got 513. So that's less than 5,000. And it doesn't have four digits, so we put it here. We've got 1,586. That's less than 5,000 but it has four digits too, so it goes in the, in the very middle, one, five, eight, six. One, five, eight, six. 
Okay, next one we've got is 5,111. And so we think, does is it um, less than 5,000? No, it's not. So even if it fit in the category that is four digits, which it does, it cannot go in there. So we would have to put it over here. Because it to go in the middle, it has to fit both categories. And it only fits the middle one, so it doesn't go in there. Okay, and then the last one is 8,000. So that's, is that less than 5,000? No, that's not less than 5,000. So it goes on the outside again. Okay, so that's this one. Um, this one has two characteristics, one characteristic, and zero of the characteristics. Okay, and then we've got this type of uh, Venn diagram that overlaps. And so we looked at this at the very beginning of the video. And so it says, use this method when you have some numbers that have both qualities and other numbers that only have one of the qualities. So here is where both would go. And then if it only has one quality, depending on what it is, um, if, the, if it's odd but not greater than 2,000, it goes here. And if it's greater than 2,000 but not odd, so if it's even, then it goes here. And then if it is greater than 2,000 and also odd, it goes right there. And then if it's neither of those, it goes on the outside. I know that seems confusing, but if we just do the numbers one by one and focus and see which one it, it, it is, then we can do it. Okay, so it says uh, place these numbers above. Um, and then we've got to notice. Notice that with all Venn diagrams, numbers can go on the outside of all circles when they don't fit into any of the categories. So that's something to remember. If it doesn't fit, it has a place to go. Okay, so we've got 8,000 first. So 8,000, is it greater than 2,000? Yes. Is it odd? No. So then we would put it here. 8,000. It cannot go there because it's not odd. It is even. Remember, uh, numbers that are um, even are 0, 2, 4, 6, 8. That they end in that. Numbers that are odd end in 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Okay? So this is even, and this is odd. Isn't that weird? Okay, so um, continuing on, we've got 513. So, is it greater than 2,000? No. Is it odd? 513 ends in a 3? Yes. So we can put it right here. Next up, we've got 391. So first, is it greater than 2,000? No. Is it odd? Well, it ends in a 1, so yes it is. Okay, and then we'll do this last one here together, and then I'll let you do the rest by yourself. Um, 25. So is 25 greater than 2,000? No. Is 25 odd? Yes. So we could put it right here. Okay, so there are one, two, three, four more. So see if you could put those in the correct spots um, with the video paused and then play it again and see if you've got the right answers. Okay, so you should have um, your answers down. So this next one is 679. So is 679 greater than 2,000? No. Is it odd? It ends in a nine? Yes. So 679 goes right there. There's a ton in that circle, aren't there? Uh, next one, 1,586. Is it greater than 2,000? No. Is it odd? It ends in a six? No, it's not. It's not in there. So that means it goes on the very outside, 1,586. 1,586 goes on the outside. Doesn't fit either category. We've got 511 next. So that is greater than 2,000. Is it odd as well? Yes, it is. So it goes in the middle here. And last one, we've got 3,874. So that is greater than 2,000. Is it odd? Four does not odd. No. So it's going to go only right here. 3,874. Okay, so it is now sorted. We've got all numbers. And so if you just look at it as a big and think, oh man, there's so many numbers, how am I going to sort to all these? That might be difficult. But if you just focus on each number one at a time and just see if it fits the qualities, easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay? Next up, we've got a Carol diagram. So this one's a little bit different than the Venn diagrams, but same idea where you're sorting. Okay, it's got four categories. So it's going to be odd or not odd, aka 
even. So if it's odd or even, and then do the digits add to less than 10 or do the digits add to more than 10? Than 10. When now, now when it says that, do the digits add? So if I had the number 124, to find if the digits add, I would go one plus two plus four. I would add those together. So four, five, six, seven. So 124 adds to seven. That means that it is less than 10 and my number ends in a four. So that makes it even and it would go in this box right here. Okay, but we're not using that number. We're using these ones down here. So we're going to have to add all of these together. Some of them will be easier than others. For example, 8,000. 8,000 is easy to add because anything plus zero is just itself. So it adds to eight, so that's less than 10. And is it odd or even? It is even, so 8,000 would go here. Okay, next one we've got 3,874. Um, so we have to add this together, three plus eight plus seven plus four. So we've got seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Um, 11 plus eight is 19, 20, 21, 22. So this adds to 22, it adds to more than 10 and it ends in a four, so it is even. So we put three, eight, seven, four here. And we can erase that because we don't need it. Okay, next one we've got 5,111. So five, six, seven, eight. It adds to eight, so the digits add to eight. Um, that's less than 10 and it ends in a one, which is odd, so we put it here. Notice how I'm figuring out one quality and then figuring out the other quality to see where it goes. So it either goes in this column or this column. Once we figure out that, then it either goes in this row or this row. Okay, let's do 25 together. So two plus five is seven. That definitely goes here. Now we just have to figure out if it's odd or even. It ends in a five, that makes it odd. So 25 goes here. Okay, so you pause the video and see if you could place these four, these last four. They will definitely go in one of these four boxes. Pause now. Okay, so you should be finished. We've got three plus nine plus one, that's 13, that's more than 10, so it goes in this column. Now which row? It ends in a one that makes it odd, so we put it here. We've got 679 next. So six, er, nine plus seven is 16, plus six is 22, so it goes here. And it ends in a nine that makes it odd, so we need 679 right here. Next, we've got 513. So five plus one is six, plus three is nine. Goes here, and it ends in a three. That makes it odd. So that goes right here. And notice how I put a space in between those numbers because it gets tricky um, marking for me when you put them all bunched up and it just looks like a bunch of random numbers. So make sure you separate them so that I could tell the difference. Um, and you can when you're marking too. Last one, 1,586. So one plus five plus eight plus six. Um, okay, that's 12 plus eight is 20. So it goes definitely in this column and it ends in a six that makes it even, AKA not odd. And it goes right there. So this is what you should have. And if you don't, then you should place it in um, the correct box. All right, so your textbook assignment then is on page 44 to 45, and it is number one, two, and three. So one to three, that's not very good at all. Try again. One to three, and number six. So it's shorter, but it's tricky.